So yesterday my problem was, and this is how it was yesterday, I didn't change anything. It would do this fine, and it wouldn't stop. It wouldn't stop draining out of here. It would just, the water would just circulate through here, through the whole thing, and continue to drain out instead of refilling these. And what you should see, what I hope you see happening in a second, is that this gets cut off, and it will do the same thing again, automatically. But one problem is because there's so much water going through this, there's uh, 11 liters, or these are actually half liters, so there's like 15 liters going, going into this thing. So it builds up pressure, and this is a small gauge like I was saying, so it builds that pressure up, and it's hard to cut it off. And you can hear, there it goes. It's real important that this this return everything is on a neat, like level. If there's one dip down, if this dips down and water can get stuck here, it'll just it won't work right. And that's like this should be the last hurrah of the water, and it really cuts off. You can see there's bubbles and shit going on. And that looks good, and it's done, and it continues to fill up again do the bottles. That's how it's supposed to, that's how you want it. I don't know what, why I decided to start working. I didn't touch it since yesterday and it would not work properly. But that's all good. And I mean if it can, I had one time on the last setup it didn't, it didn't cut off out of like, I don't know how many times, you know, like a couple hundred times running it. So it's like 99 times out of 100 it works. And it, but one thing I did notice, you need to have your input on one end and your output on the other end of the loop. I had the, I had the input uh, like right here and it's too close. It's too close to the output so it's too easy for that pressure to just get sucked from over here and go back so it won't start the siphon again. I mean the siphon won't stop. The siphon won't stop is a problem if the input is too close to the output. But when you separate the input on one end, the very end on one side and the output on the other end, the opposite end, everything seems to work smoothly. So that's one thing to, uh, to remember when you set the system up. There could be a way to change that but I it's simple enough to just one and the other end, especially when you got this tube. You know, it's so cheap and, and it just, it's so flexible. Uh, I mean, it's literally flexible, but it creates, you can be flexible with your design and change it around to fit your needs. Because, I mean, this is all the same stuff that I had at the last, the last uh, apartment, but in a completely different f configuration. And I didn't have to buy anything new. Really, I just bought some, I bought this couple new pieces that cost like a dollar. So, there it is. And you hook it up on a timer and just forget about it, you know? Put your timer settings on every, whatever, however long you want it. I want to do it like minimally, how, what is the minimum that I can run the pump? Every like half hour, every hour, I don't know, something like that. My last timer busted, so I'm like weary to buy another sh cheap timer. But I should probably spring for a decent digital timer that won't break on me again. I had the regular analog one. But uh, I'm, all, I'm always home anyway, so what's the point? And I, I need to get a job, so I'm not always home. But that's another video, that's another story. And like I said, I should be growing more lettuce. I should should have a a better planned out crop of like ro rotating vegetables. Once one matures, I don't know really how to do that. I need to research that, but there should be a way for me to take like 12 or extend it more and then have like a ro like rotate the crop. So once one is on its way out, the other one is halfway to harvest. And then you're continually harvesting your greens whatever you want but 
And then, I mean, the potentials of this are pretty cool. We're on, I'm five stories up. We've got, you know, balconies over there, balconies over there. All of these are, this is all southern exposure. I mean, if, if everybody was doing this, if this was caught on like, like football, like whatever is hot catches on, you know, everybody, whatever, you know, this, if everybody was doing this, it'd be pretty cool. We could knock on the neighbor's door and, and hear some cantaloupe, can I have a watermelon, you know, trading and bartering your vegetables and putting a little bit of money into your pocket. You can't, you couldn't do this with dirt. You, you couldn't do this on your little balcony with dirt if this works you know i'm yet to yet to really see this work but if it does if we get results with this you know it's it'll be good because what would you need a hundred pounds 200 pounds of dirt it's not feasible and the the drainage and this is a close basically a closed system i mean you're losing whatever water to the plants and to precipitation and evaporation uh, but other than it's you're not gonna lose too much water and you know in a traditional dirt grown system which is infeasible here anyway you're losing all the water and that's one of the reasons the plants actually grow faster in hydroponics not only because well this is aquaponics but in hydroponics you know you get faster growth and, and quicker and more harvest because not only because they're getting their nutrients, but because the, the plants are literally suspended in oxygen or an oxygen rich environment. That's half the that's half like the battle. And these roots are just gonna be in the air and hopefully there'll be enough moisture in between waterings in the pipe to keep the roots moist and that's all you need. As long as they're getting oxygen and they're moist, they don't dry out, they'll be fine. And it's so humid here, that's not gonna be a problem. So hopefully it all works out. We'll all, we'll all have to see about that in a couple of months.